So yes, I'm Chamit, and I'm sure you won't be able to pronounce my last name correctly. I can, I can bet on that. Um, so uh, let's stick to Chamit, um, and I will be talking about uh, building uh, various sorts of pipelines um, and uh, the list of things that uh, I have compiled uh, for you to consider when uh, building pipelines. So uh, we'll go through. Uh, uh, We'll try to understand the different types of pipelines and uh, why we need to build pipelines. And then the list of things I mentioned and then uh, how, uh, as a vendor, WSO2 can help you uh, to become successful uh, in your uh, agile development processes. So uh, when you say CICD, most of the people say that's continuous integration and continuous delivery. But uh, if you look at the end-to-end -end scenario, there's more to it. Obviously, uh, you have continuous integration. That's where your codes go in. And uh, you integrate multiple systems uh, in that section. You, have, uh, you run, uh, integrate testing suits, security things, and uh, all sorts of uh, other systems. And that's the integration space. That's where the continuous integration happens. And then you take uh, your changes and uh, move it across multiple environments. So that's called the continuous delivery space. You might have multiple, multiple stages in your pipelines. For example, it could be test or staging, pre-production, UAT, whatever you call. That's the continuous delivery space. But the last piece is called the continuous deployment. That's where you collect all the changes that you have developed and deploy or promote into production. So when you say continuous star pipelines, that involves continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. So during this talk, uh, we will touch each of these uh, sections and, uh, and see uh, the things that we can do uh, in each area to become successful. So why pipelines? Why do why, why we need to build pipelines? So pipeline is a repeatable, safe, and a secure way to deliver changes into production as quickly as possible. And pipelines enables you to integrate various sort of other systems, or especially tests, and execute those tests in a fully automated way. And since the, when you create pipelines, since everything is automated, it's very easy to add checkpoints and monitoring, which will give you visibility of what happens, what and when things happen uh, as you move on along the pipeline. And uh, the most important thing is when you have pipelines, it will give you, especially when you have continuous deployment pipelines, it will help you to deliver changes into production with a zero downtime. So let's go through the list of seven, uh, seven things uh, that I compiled for you to consider when building pipelines in your organizations. First thing is planning. So how do you plan? What are the things to consider when building pipelines? When you have multiple applications or microservices, you need to create multiple pipelines targeting each application or microservice. That means you will end up with creating multiple pipelines. And more pipelines means that adds more complexity in your environment. And that becomes more critical when you have multiple environments targeting each stage. And if you're running in an environment uh, like a virtualized or a containerized environments, you might have to bring up vir virtual images or containers on demand, or in some cases, even entire environments. You, need, you might want to bring up, perform certain operations, and then bring down. So you've got to think of where you operate from and pick and choose the right set of tools and technologies before building these pipelines. And the second thing is the security. Security is not something to consider when your changes are delivered into production. You need to make sure that whatever the changes you deliver does not put your production environment into a vulnerable state, and you need to address those things in very early stages of the pipeline. You can integrate code scans, penetration tests, and all sorts of other tests, and make sure that the changes you deliver agrees with your internal compliances and does not bring down 
the production for any reason. So whenever you, when you're running these tests, you need to have processes in place. If you find a security bug or a vulnerability in the code, you need to cut off the pipeline, uh, return that code into your SCM, and uh, assign a developer to fix, fix whatever those bugs or vulnerabilities. Third thing is automa test automation. In the context of CI, CD, when, you, when you're talking about tests, tests have two aspects. One is automation. Every test has to be automated. It has to be run in an automated way. And the second aspect is the coverage. So more cover, test coverage you have for your code, that's the ideal case we all want to be in. But we all know that, realistically speaking, in reality, that's somewhat an impossible task, especially with time constraints we, we all run into in our projects. So how do you address this? The most popular way is you pick and choose whatever the critical business flows uh, in, in your applications or in your microservices, and then you try to cover those aspects first, and then you go live with those. And you can't drop the ball there. You have to come back, reevaluate, and reprioritize, and it becomes an iterative process. So over time, you will have coverage, uh, test coverage for your entire code base. Fourth thing is the pre-production. I know most of us when, in our organizations, when we have pipelines, we all have a staging or a pre-production environment. Having that is critical because that's the environment where you have, you can test your applications in a production-like setup. But the, most of us, the thing that most of us forget is we do not have production-like data in most cases in pre-production environments. When I say production-like, the data types has to be ident identical and the data size has to be identical law. It should be a mirror of production. Otherwise, when you try, when you, in your pre-production or staging stage, if you try out with sample data and when your applications goes into production, there are very high chances of failing your applications because it does not work well with the size and the type of data that are there in the production system. So having a pre-production environment with production-like data is critical. And the fifth thing is the deployment strategies. I think in, my, in the previous session, Lakmal uh, talked about these deployment strategies. So uh, when, you have, when you want to app update your production environment at a, with updates at a higher frequency, you cannot afford even having a slight downtime because more the updates you send in, and if the production, and if you want to restart or take, bring down the production environment for each, each time you send in an update, that's not affordable. So you need to start using these advanced deployment strategies such as blue-green, rolling, canary. Not only that, you need to have a rollback strategy in place as well. Sixth thing is monitoring. So monitoring, yes, like I said before, monitoring improves visibility, but it's critical to monitor the use experience as well. Because once you push your changes into production, it should not degrade the performance of production environment by any means. So you need to constantly monitor response times and performance in the pre-production stages to make sure that the changes will not bring down, not degrade production uh, by any means. So the seven things, this is the most important thing, is the culture. So culture plays a critical role when creating an agile development process. Because uh, once you have an agile development process, developers cannot think that they are responsible only for the code they write they become more responsible, and they need to own the testing space and the production operation sp uh, spaces as well. So when you have pipelines built in your organizations, developers need, need to understand that they own the entire process end-to-end. -end. And that mind shift is critical 
when you are adapting agile development processes. So now, how WSO2 can help with uh, building these pipelines? Obviously, in most cases, uh, developers or engineers in your organizations write code, tests, write tests, and basically own the first, p the first few steps, stages of the pipeline. But WSO2 always come in and help you to pull off the last mile. Be WSO2 recently started creating platform native installers. And if you go to WSO2.com, go to like product page of WSO2.com, you will find a bunch of platform native installers we have hosted there. And when creating installers, uh, we focused on creating installers for you to evaluate WSO2 technologies, and as well as to run your production system uh, using these installers. So, so far we have created installers for AWS CloudFormation, Kubernetes, Docker Compose, and using Helm likewise. And we will keep on creating these installers targeting popular computer platforms and uh, updating this list. And what we are trying to do here is we, are tr we have done these installers in a way where you can uh, take a Git clone and following five or six steps only, you can get a fully up and running WSO2's WSO2 product or a product pattern in your environment. So it, I'm sure it will make your lives much easier when uh, pulling the last mile or when setting up the production environments uh, using these installers. And the other thing is selective updates. So if you, if you were using WSO2 up, updates, uh, we call it WAM, uh, so far we've been sending all updates that we create when you get a WAM update. So if you want to, wanted to update a product, you don't have any choice but to receive whatever the number of updates that we send, send to you. But now we have started channel-based concept for updates, and we now have the security-only channel. So you can receive either you, can, you have the choice either to receive all the updates or the security-only updates, because most of the customers, most of the organizations I know, once they create and certify a setup, they don't want to apply various sort of updates and change and keep uh, validating and keep getting certi certified for these products. They only care about receiving security updates so that they make sure that, one, their business use cases are not touched, and the second thing is their setups are kept safe and secure at all times. The other thing is the configuration management. So right now, we only have Puppet. If you go to our Puppet public repository in GitHub, uh, you can download, uh, you can get uh, Puppet modules written for all the products. And we are in the process of updating those Puppet modules into Puppet 5 now. And at the same time, we are working on uh, releasing Ansible modules uh, similar to Puppet uh, for all the products. And the last thing is the managed cloud service. Managed cloud service is something that we collect all, these, collect all the things that we mentioned, that I mentioned in, during this presentation, and provide that service for you as a managed service where WSO2 is responsible uh, running end-to-end -end pipelines for you. So if you want to know more about uh, managed service, you can uh, talk to Sanjay. He's sitting over there. He owns the managed cloud space. Or you can find any other WSO2 person and uh, ask about that. So any questions? OK, cool. This means two things. Either you understood everything I said, or the otherwise. <laughs> anyway, you can catch me. I'll be, I'll be hanging around throughout the day and tomorrow. Oh, there's a question. Okay. Uh, so when you uh, take updates, sometimes you have to start a server. So uh, what's the uh, kind of the guidance, uh, good practice for like kind of high availability and uh, stuff? Sorry, could you please? Uh, uh, so, so when you take updates, uh, uh, you would uh, restart the service? 
Yeah. And uh, that's a service disruption. So uh, in production, some situation requires, you know, the always on. So uh, what do you, uh, what's your kind of suggestion and yeah. practices? So uh, that's where uh, if you are running uh, your setups in a virtualized or a containerized environment, there are some very well-known practices that you can follow uh, to apply updates uh, without running into any downtime. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, blue-green is one such strategy. Canary is another st such strategy, and there's rolling update strategy. Likewise, there are some very well-defined uh, strategies for us to follow uh, to minimize the downtime. Minimize means like uh, to perform operations without causing any downtimes. So there are lots of uh, resources available if you search for blue-green or canary or rolling. So uh, that's the recommended way as of now uh, for ops people to uh, run maintenance without causing any downtime. 